In this video, we will focus on protozoan parasites. To recap, parasites can be divided into three main types. Protozoa, helminths, and ectoparasites. Protozoa are single-celled eukaryotic organisms. Protozoans are a class of protists, and so are other organisms such as slime molds and alga. All these guys are unicellular eukaryotes. Protozoan comes from the Latin and Greek to mean first animal, thought to be the earliest animal to have existed. All protozoans are eukaryotes and therefore possesses what's called a true or membrane-bound nucleus. However, protozoans have no cell wall. Protozoans can either be free-living or parasitic in nature, meaning they can live in the outside world without uh, any issues, mostly in the water, or they can be parasitic in nature and live um, and infect humans. Protozoa range in size from slightly more than 1 to more than 100 micrometers. They are single-celled organisms and have a true membrane-bound nucleus, but they do not have a cell wall as mentioned. Protozoa obtain nutrition from absorption of small molecules or by ingestion of them from the environment. They are predators preying on bacteria, algae, and even other protozoa species. The cytoplasm is frequently divided into the inner endoplasm and thin outer ectoplasm. The endoplasm contain granules which, uh, where they store their foods. The ectoplasm contains organelles which are mainly responsible for movement. These organelles responsible for movement include pseudopods, cilia or flagella. It is the mode of movement of the protozoa that is used to help classify them into four groups. The amoeba, also known as the sarcodina, the flagellates, the mastigophora, the ciliates, the ciliophora, and the sporozoa, the apicomplexa. Let's focus on each of these groups and learn a bit about their unique characteristics. Beginning with the amoeba, also known as the sarcodina. These guys live in fresh water, sea, or moist soil. The movement is by pseudopodia. They extend the cell membrane and allow the cytoplasm to flow into this extension. And thus they're able to move in this way. They capture their prey also by pseudopodia through phagocytosis, engulfing things from the outside. The reproduction is by binary fission, and they also can form cysts. An example of a pathogenic uh, amoeba is Intamoeba histolytica. Intamoeba histolytica is a major cause of amoebic dysentery, severe diarrhea worldwide. The cysts and trephozoites are ingested in humans from fecally contaminated food, water, or hands, or from fecal contact during sexual practices. The cysts and trephozoites travel to the large intestine. Here, they can remain, causing diarrhea and colitis. They can also be pooped out, or, rarely, they can invade the bloodstream and travel to other organs, such as the brain, liver, and lungs. The next group of protozoan uh, parasites are the flagellates, the mastigophora. As the name suggests, they have flagella that help them with movement. Their body is covered by something called cuticle or pellicle. They are oval in shape and reproduction is again by binary fission. Some examples of pathogenic flagellates include Trypanosoma, Giardia, Lishmania, and Trichomonas. Trypanosoma cruce is a transmitted by 
triatomine bugs and causes Chagas disease, a condition characterized by heart and gastrointestinal lesions in a chronic phase of this disease. Giardia lamblia causes giardiasis. The cysts of Giardia lamblia are ingested from contaminated water, food, or fomites and travel in the small intestines where they become trephozoites. At this stage, they attach to the small intestine and cause watery diarrhea. Lishmania transmitted by sandflies can cause lishmaniasis. Clinical manifestations range from self-limiting skin ulcers, known as oriental sores, to a highly lethal infection of the reticuloendothelial system, termed kala azar. Trichomonas is a very common cause of sexual transmitted infections, uh, specifically through from Trichomonas vaginalis. And there's a separate video on this. The third group of protozoan parasite are the ciliates, the ciliophora. They derive their name from the Latin word for eyelash, which describes the appearance of many ciliates quite well. Some or all the surface of the ciliate is covered with relatively short, dense, hair-like structures, the cilia, which beat to propel the ciliate through the water and or to draw in food particles. They are aquatic. They are abundant in almost every environment with liquid water, the ocean, marine sediments, lakes, ponds, rivers. Examples of uh, a pathogenic ciliate is Balantidium coli. It is the only ciliate known to be capable of infecting humans. It is often associated with swine, the pig, as the primary reservoir host. The cysts of Balantidium coli are ingested through contaminated food and water. They become trephozoites and colonize the large intestine. They replicate through binary fission. They can cause acute or chronic abdominal pain or symptoms complicated by diarrhea or dysentery. Finally, the fourth group are the sporozoa, the AP complexa. These guys don't have any specialized organelles for locomotion. They are non-motile protozoa. Examples include plasmodium which is the cause of malaria and requires the Anopheles mosquito for transmission. Toxoplasma gondii is a non-motile sporozoan that is carried by cats. It has a serious effect in immunocompromised people and can cause congenital defects. Cryptosporidium and microsporidium causes chronic diarrhea also in immunocompromised people. So in summary, protozoan are a type of unicellular eukaryotes, which are known to be one of the first living animals in the world. They are eukaryotic because they have a true membrane-bound nucleus. However, they have no cell wall. They're classified into groups based on how they move. These are four groups, the amoeba, flagellate, ciliate, and the sporozoa, which are actually non-motile. Thank you for watching.